floor of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if the mouth is not speaking, maybe there's nothing in your heart. But uh, I hear a lot coming out of your heart. I hear the praises of God. So that's awesome. It's great to be back uh, in the North region. Uh, good morning, family. Good morning. I said good morning, family. It's uh, very encouraging to see a few new faces in the, uh, in the audience today. If you're visiting for the first time, we want you to feel encouraged. Uh, I saw uh, Sean Corrigan's sister. She's visiting with us this morning. Awesome to be in the family of God with yes. true disciples. Amen? Amen. Uh, let's go to God in prayer before we have our study. Father, I thank you so much for to, uh, today. We thank you for every day because we know no day is promised. Father, we know that uh, you, you could have destroyed the world at the, at the sin of Adam and Eve. And yet, Heavenly Father, we understand that they are our parents and we, all, we, all, we, we only have truly uh, one set of parents. So in a sense, Father, we, we are all brother and sister. And uh, we pray today, Father, that we can be true disciples, yes, Father. Uh, that we can live lives as true disciples, yes. uh, that we can be true Christians, yes. and we can refute yes. that which is false. Father, we yes. know there's so many lies out there, yes. uh, and yet, Father, we know that truly uh, we, we, we've got to only refute those lies with the Word of God. Yes. We pray for uh, not only forceful advancement, Father, uh, within all of Europe, but uh, we pray for your message to ring out, the gospel to ring out, yes. not only in the hearts of the disciples, but in the hearts of those who, who don't, don't know that they need to follow you. Yes. Father, we love you more than life itself. We, we do not look at our rewards as in this world. We know that we are aliens, Father, that are living in a strange land, Father, and that we will truly receive our citizenship when we get to heaven. We understand, Father, from the Bible that we have been called to a purpose, and yet, Father, we know that Satan wars at us with his purpose. We know you have plans to prosper us and not to harm us. Plans to give us hope and a future, Father. I pray that we call upon you, pray to you, and give all our hearts. We love you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm entitled the lesson, Counterfeit Christianity. Woo! Counterfeit Christianity. You ever seen a counterfeit before? Oh, yeah. Counterfeit Christianity. You ever seen a counterfeit anything? Does a counterfeit yeah. fire you up? No. no. It does not. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Um, we're going to dig on in here to the scripture here. Paul sees false apostles that kind of weave their way into the church. And before we read it, I'm reminded of going to the Manila Philippines. You know, Manila is an incredible country and they have a deep love for God. Yeah, and uh, if you know Manila, they have certain aspects uh, of the country where they have uh, uh, manufacturing facilities. And we got a chance to go uh, to a mall that had manufactured all the latest, greatest fashion designs. And living in uh, uh, the, the, the fashion capital of the world, London, I thought, okay, hey, I'm on a I'm on ministry salary. Let's go to this area where they have all the nice stuff for a real cheap price. <laughs> and so we got there, and it was awesome. I saw uh, Bally bags and Nike shoes, and it was it was incredible. Yes. And uh, you know, I, I said, okay, well, let me. I grabbed Ola, and he was all excited about it. And, and uh, I said, I want that bag right there. It was a it was a it was a, it was a Bally bag. You know, those bags are quite expensive. And uh, so I, I, I wanted to buy the bag and taking it home and feeling really good. I'm going to bring that bag with me. I used that bag maybe once or twice and it no. fell apart. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> it fell apart. Now, yes. I was such a, such a, I mean, I, I mean, I, uh, twice and it fell apart. Oh, I was yeah. such a, uh, I was so embarrassed because I kind of knew it was a foamy. <laughs> but I, I wanted to, I just wanted to convince myself it was a real bag. Oh. You know what I mean? I, I knew around a couple times hoping people noticed my valley bag. Right? <laughs> no one noticed, no one gave me any credit, no one said, hey, that's a nice bag. God was humbling me going, hey, you don't pay the cost, you're not going to get the real thing. Uh -huh. yeah. You don't pay the price, you will get a phony that will wear out on you quick. Ooh. I pray Christianity hasn't worn out on you quick. Oh. It could be that you actually have never had true Christianity. Oh, it yeah. could mean that you could not be a true disciple. I remember coming to a meeting like this and going, okay, everybody's all excited and giving me hugs and yeah. fired up. What, what's, this is a, what is this, a marketing thing? What, you guys, <laughs> what is this? Why are you guys so excited? It must be false. Yeah. And that's the heart of somebody who isn't living a right life. Right. When you see the truth, immediately you, you come up with something critical. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember seeing true Christians singing from all their heart. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing Christians from every single nation. I remember looking out like I see here today, seeing Brazilian and, yes. and then South African and seeing, seeing Asian and seeing 
English and then seeing yeah. London, those are two different countries. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Switzerland, seeing all the different nations, and uh, to be quite honest, I had a smile on my heart, but I also was a bit, bit, bit uh, taken aback because I didn't think something like that could happen. Right. Where people could come together for a common purpose. See, I, I went to black churches. Oh boy. Mm. Are you with me here? Yeah. Where, where, where the church is all black. <laughs> Newsflash, not everybody in the world is black. <laughs> Maybe you've gone to a church that's all white. I like white people. <laughs> Newsflash, there are more than just white people in the world. Yeah. Maybe you've gone to a church that's all Asian. Yeah. I love Asian people. Asian people are awesome. That's the best food in the world. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but when you look at what God's vision for the church is, it's a, it's a vision of every single nation. Amen. Black, white, rich, poor, small, great. It does not matter in the eyes of God. The church has to be comprised of all nations. Amen. And that's who we are, and that's our vision, and that's our goal. got to pay the price for the real thing. Yeah. Yeah. Paul tells the church here in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Come on, Michael. he corrects them on the false apostles and the false leaders that kind of creeped into the church. He says in verse 1, I hope you'll put up with a little of my foolishness. I pray that you do that today. Amen. <laughs> says, but you're already doing that. <laughs> says, I'm jealous for you with a godly jealousy. I promise you to one husband, to Christ, so I might present you as a pure virgin to him. But I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion in Christ. He says, counterfeit Christianity can begin in your mind. Wow. Yeah. This is the true Christians. He's writing to those that had already become Christians. And he says, I I'm afraid that you may be led astray by how you think, by your mind, and in your pure devotion to Christ. Notice he doesn't say your pure devotion to the kingdom. Yeah. We're going to get there. But he says your pure devotion to Christ. He says when you're purely devoted to God, yes. your mind can't be led astray. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're devoted to church, if you're devoted to race, if you're devoted to culture, if you're devoted to anything else, your mind can get led astray. Yeah. Your mind can get led astray. You, you can see something happen to your race, your culture, and you can you can become, you, yeah. you, you can get focused on that and not focused on Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I am so inspired by all the movements in the world, yeah. specifically the civil rights movement. Yeah. What would we be as a world without a man who put his foot down and said, hey, we've got to treat each other equally. Come on. Yeah. A, name, a, a man by the name of Martin Luther King. Yeah. Now, a lot of people don't know that he was inspired by true radical European Christianity. <laughs> Because Martin Luther King's name is not Martin Luther King. His original name is Michael King. Yet when he came to Europe, he saw radical Christianity in Germany. And he saw Martin Luther take a stand for what the Bible teaches. And so when he saw Martin Luther take a stand, he was inspired by that. Of course, Luther started the Lutheran movement. He took a stand against Catholicism. And he said, listen, the word of God is the standard, not man's opinion. And so that began the Lutheran movement. Well, Martin Luther King came and saw that he was so inspired that he changed his name from Michael King to Martin Luther King. Wow. See, I got to inspire you that there's there, there can be radical, totally, purely devoted Christianity from sold out European disciples. Yeah. Yeah. Are you with me right here? Yeah. Yeah. That, inspire, that, that inspire the world. Yeah. But when I look at the civil rights movement, civil rights rights movement is not going to change the world. The <laughs> civil rights aren't going to get you into heaven. Mm -hmm. Spiritual rights will. Mm -hmm. Spiritual rights will. And yet being a spiritual movement, this is the only movement that can change the world. Yeah. That can change every single race. But I think about that when I go, wow, look what that movement did. It, it literally changed the world. Yeah. And yet that's, that, that's our goal, to change the world. And he says, he says, for if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preached, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it easily enough. I mean, you had the church putting up with false teaching, putting up with a different Jesus. And we know, if you, if you read the news, there's a lot of different Jesuses out there. Yeah. There's a lot of different Jesus. There's, 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 there's the rich Jesus, yeah. where you come and a preacher tells you how you can become rich. Oh, yeah. Now, if you come for the first time and you're looking for a prosperity sermon, you might as well leave. 
because I'm going to call you and give up everything. Come on. I'm going to say, guess where your blessings are? To be in heaven. Yeah. We are not into building some great, big, huge palatial structure. We're not into the preacher being rich. We're not into the preacher telling you you're going to be rich. The only yeah. thing I will tell you from the word of God is that you can be rich in Christ. I want to tell you the true Christianity. I don't know. We want to talk about any false Christianity right here. Yeah. Right? He uh, says, hey, putting up with that, that, that counterfeit, you know, there's a, there's, 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 there's. Sadly, Jesus is, is seen as homosexual now. Yeah, wow. Well. There, there literally is the gay translation of the Bible. Oh. Yeah. Now, this is in no means or there, there's no reason or hate or anger in my heart towards anyone who has that background. We have people that have been converted, yeah. that have become Christians yeah. out of that background. Yeah. But this is the Jesus that's preached up there. Yeah. A Jesus that tolerates sin. A Jesus that tolerates that which is immoral in the eyes of God and not even biologically normal when you look at those two things coming together. But this is the Jesus that's preached. It's preached in school. There's a lot of different Jesus. There's an there's, there's, there's the entertainment Jesus where you go to church to be entertained, not edified. And if the music is good and the jokes are good and he gets you laughing and he has it, well, great, uh, two hours, you kept my attention, thank you. And then you go get something to eat. You don't leave change. Are you with me? Yeah. Ooh, that Jesus is preached out there. You, yeah. you made that maybe. There, there, there's the Jesus that never challenges you. Oh. Right? The milk toast, soppy Jesus. That you leave not thinking about your destiny. You leave not thinking about your life. You leave not thinking about anybody. But you, you just leave feeling great about everything. You know, oftentimes I've found in my life, the only times I really make a change is when I get mad. Yeah. 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 It's, true. It's, it's not when I start feeling really good about myself. That's usually when I don't want to change anything. <laughs> are, are you with me here? Yeah. You start feeling really good about yourself. You know, you start, you know, you, your head gets yeah. like this. Yeah. You, know, you start floating out there, you start floating around the fellowship. You know? <laughs> that, that's happened to me several times. Uh, and this year has been a rough year, so I, I felt like at the beginning of the year, I kind of floating around and all of a sudden got, and then you're out of my head right there. Right? You gotta, you gotta begin to hate things to, 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 to change. But there's a different, there's a lot of different Jesus. We just want to talk about the Jesus of the Bible. Amen. Amen. The Jesus of the Bible. He says, I don't think I'm in any lesser inferior to those super apostles. I may not be a trained speaker, but I have knowledge. He says, we have made this perfectly clear to you in every way. And then he says in verse 13, he says, for such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, masquerading as what? Apostles of Christ. Now, he uses apostle in the lower case. Apostle in the loose meaning means just a messenger. Now, the original apostles were those who saw the resurrected Christ. There are no original apostles now. They died. I hope we don't have to talk about that too much. But the, the, the word apostle means messenger. So these were just guys who had the message. These were just regular disciples uh, that he's talking about. He says, for such uh, false apostles of deceitful workmen masquerading as apostles of Christ. Masquerading as true Christians. Fake Christians. He says, and no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of what? Light. I've never seen something in this. Says he masquerades as an angel of light. Yeah. Says it's not surprising then if his servants masquerades as servants of righteousness, their end will be what their actions deserve in the church says. I was, I was blown away because it says Satan doesn't masquerade as an angel of darkness. We understand that Satan is associated with darkness. Yeah. Satan is associated with the total and complete absence of God. That is actually what hell is. A lot of people think hell is just going to the eternal damnation. Hell is the absence of God. You can literally be living in hell on earth. And that's often what happens when you, have not, when you don't have God in your life. That's how my life was. I was living on earth in hell. How do I know? Pornography date. Masturbation date. Lying to my job. Cheating. Immoral behavior. Persuading a woman to have an abortion persuading several women to, to, to have abortions, uh, lying and just being afraid to be honest about who I was, Come on. not being open about how I was raised and that I was raised very poor and I didn't really have much and I just wanted to be something that I was not. I never told anybody any of that stuff. I never told anyone that there was drug use in my family. 
I never talked to anybody and said, hey, there have been people in my family that have been, been sexually molested. And all these really sad and dark things that had gone on that we as a family tried to put a smile on our face and pretend that they were not there. I've never talked about any of that in my family. I never talked about the wickedness in my own heart, my bitterness, my prejudice, where I would actually treat people of a certain race different than another race. I don't know if you've been there, uh, but, but you know, a lot of people say, I don't see color. I think that's a complete and total lie. Uh, we all see color. Uh, I think we do. We don't need to treat each other based on that. But there was so much sin in my life. Yeah. Come on, Mike. So much. Yeah. And those sins can come creeping right back into my life when I do not have God. Yeah. Hell is the complete and total absence of God. Yeah. If you feel like life is hell, it could be because God is not in your life. Yeah. See, when God's in your life, it is awesome. Yeah. God gives you hope. God gives you dreams. God, God, God can use your failure for his glory. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what's so awesome. I wonder why people doubt the Bible. God is so radically, embarrassingly honest about the people that he chose. He tells their sins, their weaknesses, their failures, and he still uses them. That tells us that, hey, you can have sin, you can have weakness, you can have failure, and God can still use you. God can still use you. What's interesting is it says Satan masquerades as an angel of light. I thought about that. I go, Satan capitalizes on our ability and our attraction to light. Mm. Mm. We are not attracted to darkness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't see a dark alley go, oh, that's a great place to go. You know, let's go there. <laughs> Even now, if you look at the light, you're drawn to it. Yeah. You're drawn to it whether you want to. If this room was completely dark and it was a little small, tiny bit of light, you'd be drawn to it. Yeah. Satan knows we're drawn to light. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I thought, wow. He knows we're drawn to light. He knows we're not really drawn to darkness. Yeah. yeah. But when it's when, when there's light, he knows we're drawn to light. Mm. So Satan doesn't portray himself as darkness. Yeah. He portrays himself as light. Yeah. Come on, bro. He doesn't show himself as darkness. No, no, no. no. He shows himself as light. Why? Because he wants to deceive us. Yeah. Wow. He wants to trick you. By persuading you to be drawn to that which is light, which is really not light. Mm. There's so many, okay. so many things that look, that have an appearance of wisdom, but they, yeah. there, there's no wisdom there. Yeah. There's no wisdom there. Satan knows that we are drawn to light. You know, I was reading a story about this counterfeit money that was coming through uh, different banks. And one of the things they said that they trained the tellers to do is they, there, there was no no uh, barcode or anything that they looked at. How they trained the tellers to be able to distinguish the right ones from the wrong ones was from the teller being very used to the feel and the touch of the real thing. Mm. So when the teller was very used to the feel and the touch of a real bill, then they could go, oh, this doesn't feel like a real bill. Wow. This doesn't, this doesn't, this doesn't, ah, this doesn't feel right. Right? And that, that only became possible if they spent a lot of time with the real thing. Mm -hmm. So the more they spent time with real bills, then they would be able to immediately go, this doesn't feel, this doesn't sound, this doesn't feel like a real bill. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't sound the same. But they would not be able to distinguish if they didn't spend time with the real thing. You know, if you don't spend time with the real God, oh my God. if you actually don't spend time with God, you will not be able to distinguish good from evil. You will not be able to distinguish right from wrong. Even as this, this happens to disciples. Yep. That were not spending time with God so they could not understand what was going on. They couldn't distinguish from right from wrong. You know, we will never be the church we need to be if you don't spend time with God. Yeah. If, you, if you don't spend time where you can feel, you can get out there, you can pray to God, and you can feel his presence heal you of, of that anxiety. Let me tell you something. I've gone out and prayed and been anxious and been frustrated and come back from prayer. Nothing's changed but, but my heart. Amen. And then I'm ready to go on to the next day. Come on, bro. Yeah. I've read things in the Bible that have given me hope where I wanted to give up. Mm -hmm. I've read things in the Bible that have inspired me. I've read things in the Bible that make me mad. I don't know if it's about you. Sometimes I'm quite time mad. <laughs> quite time mad. <laughs> well, you know, it's those demons in your heart right there coming out. Oh, it's challenging reading the Bible, but it but we need the word of God, do we yeah, not? Yeah. If we do not spend time with God, you will not be able to distinguish right from wrong. You'll be able to be talked out of your faith from a brother or a sister, a disciple that stops walking with God, a sister that stops walking in the light, a sister stops preaching the truth, stops preaching the true gospel, or someone who's outside of the kingdom of God, you'll be easily persuaded. Yeah. Yeah. Easily. 
Why? You're not spending time with the real thing. You're not spending time mm. with God. Matthew chapter 13. You guys with me here? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Matthew yeah. chapter 13. Yeah. Well, Point number one. Counterfeit Christians can be a church. Oh, yeah. Counterfeit Christians can be a church. Matthew chapter 13. This is an interesting section of Matthew. Matthew was a he was Jewish. He was a you know he was a tax collector, so he was quite hated, and he became a Christian. Um, and what's interesting is I started looking at this and looking at the shift in the book and and thinking about even counterfeits in the Bible and and, and wondering what are some of the signs of a counterfeit Christian. Um, and I started thinking about the things that I've done personally. Uh, one of the things I've done I don't know if you've ever done this is you wonder how close you can get to sin without sinning. Yeah. yeah. You ever done that? You go, yeah. how close can I get to sinning yeah. without sinning? How do I know? The Daniel fast. So, so, so I know we're all unified if we're doing the Daniel fast. Yeah. Yeah. I, I pray that the Daniel fast isn't something just for those people or those people, yeah. but that you've taken the challenge and you are unified with the church yeah. and you're denying yourself. That's what it means yeah. to be a disciple, right? Yeah. Yeah. Stop eating so much yeah. okay. or eating what you want to eat. Um, but I started recognizing a, a wickedness that was coming into my heart. Mm. It was a desire to get really close to sin without actually sinning. Wow. <laughs> so on a fast, you, you, you say, hey, I don't want to eat this, this kind of food or, or so on and so forth. Yeah. And I started kept catching myself, you know, going, okay, well, reading the ingredients. And just, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I my, okay, if I can... You know, I just what you know. It's really, it's, and I was just trying to. I just wanted to get outside. You know, I just, man, I was just getting so yeah. close, and I, I was like, okay, can't have coffee, but uh, yeah. tea. Yeah. Just caffeine. Yeah. I'm after that caffeine. Yeah. However, I can get my fix. You know, yeah. my, my, my my caffeine. I just okay. Can't get any coffee. Maybe I can get a caffeine. And sure enough, I get ready to make my cup of tea, and Michelle walks in like all the <laughs> What are you drinking there? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, but hot water, hot water. Dust your bag. something in my heart. I like to get close to sin without sinning. That, that, that's, that's a fake. The issue is you don't want to be, you want to be as far away from sin as possible. You don't want to try to be close to sin without sinning. You, you want to stay away from it. Counterfeits love to be close to sin without sinning. How far can I push the envelope? How much of the world can I get? Wow. How much? When is it really impure? Mm. Can I touch and hold a yeah, sister's yeah. hand? I mean, what are you touching? Hold her hand for I know when I dated Michelle, I didn't even touch her hand. I couldn't. She's too pretty. <laughs> I, I couldn't. I could I hold that. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> that's enough right there. We just wait till the wedding day. Um, but no, trying to get close to sin without sinning is a sign of falsehood. Um, and as it said, why flirt with sin when you can fall in love with God? Um, um, knowing your Bible and not knowing God. You know, the Bible says in John 5, verse 39 through 40, that the Pharisees diligently studied the scriptures. But they didn't know God. Diligently looking for nuggets and knowing Bible, but not really knowing God, is a sign of a false, because the Pharisees were false. And then the one I really want us to leave here, challenged, convicted, and inspired to be able to go do, is the one that really highlights a false Christian. <laughs> When you're unfruitful. When you're unfruitful. Yeah. See, when, when you're unfruitful, there, there's nothing you can do with that. See, an apple makes an apple. Or an apple tree produces what? An orange tree produces what? Oranges. You can't say you're an orange tree and you, you don't produce anything. You may be a, an orange tree, but you're a dead orange tree. You may be an apple tree, but you're a dead apple tree. See, God saved us so that we can serve. Yeah. It's like the woman who was saved. Soon as she was, or she, she was healed, soon as she was healed, she began waiting on Jesus. Yeah. God has given us His Holy Spirit, which is the power of God. You get that at baptism, so that we can go out and take the power of God to live the Christian life yeah. to help other people become yeah, Christians, yeah. to help them to fall in, in, in love with God. Are you with me here? Yeah. But when we don't do that, there, there's something that's drawn us away. 
It could be a distraction. It could be you want to be close to sin without sinning. I don't know what it is for you. But we've got to make sure that we are true disciples because counterfeit Christians can be in the church. Matthew chapter 13, verse 1. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such a large crowd gathered around him that he got into the boat and he sat in it. While the people stood on the shore, then he told them many things in parables, saying, The farmer went out to sow seed. As he was scattering, some seed fell on, on, along the path. And the birds came and ate it up. Some seed fell on rocky places where it didn't have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop. A hundred, sixty, thirty times what was sown. He says, Amen. you can produce so much fruit yeah. with your good soil. Wow. 30, 60 times what was sown. He says, you sharing your faith has a ripple effect in the world. Yes. You telling someone about Jesus has a ripple effect. You may not see the ripple, but it has a ripple effect. Come on, bro. He says, he who has an ear, let him hear. I love that part. How many of us have ears? Yes. Yep. Hey, bro. Can, can you guys hear me in the back? Yeah. I didn't know that that's a loud mouth right there. The Lord knew he'd need to use that loud mouth to preach the gospel. Amen. What's interesting about having an ear is a picture that was sent to me of not one ear, but two ears. Mm. And when two ears are put together, they form a heart. Uh, yeah. uh, and so it was awesome because I said, wow, that, that, that really, there, there's something there. I'm looking for God in everything. I don't know about you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always trying to find a lesson in everything. Michelle yeah. thinks I'm crazy sometimes, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, wow, two ears make a heart. Yeah. So it's really not about listening with your ears. Right. It's about listening with your heart. Right. And so I realized that he says, he who has an ear, let him hear. You, you only can hear with your ears if you have a receptive heart. Right. Wow. Yeah. So if you don't have a receptive heart, you can't hear anything. Yeah. You'll be ever hearing, ever perceiving, and never really understanding the call wow. of God. Yeah. Never understanding what it really means to be a true disciple. Yeah. And how gloriously blessed you are that God has specifically chose you to know his, his, his grace. Yeah. He's, he's chosen you. And it says, he who has an ear, let him hear. Uh, intellectual knowledge is not the issue here. It's receiving hearts. I pray that you have a receiving heart today. Yeah. That you just come to go so I can be a true yeah. Christian. Yeah. He says, whoever has, in verse 12, mm -hmm. well, verse 11, he says, he replied, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more. And he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. This is why I speak to them in parables. This is really awesome. He says, he's, or really challenging, right? He says, whoever has will be giving more. He says, so if you've got faith in God, you're going give to be given more faith in God. That's awesome. He says, who has, you're going to be given more. But then he says, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. He says, you don't, you don't have to trust in me. You don't have true faith. I, I'll even take that away from you. I'll take that little bit of faith away from you. But that's, that's a challenge right there. Yeah. He says, this is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they don't see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. And then it's fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You'll be ever hearing, but never understanding. You'll ever be seeing, but never perceiving. For these people's heart have become what? Calloused. A callous happens when you injure the place. Over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, so that you do not feel. I'm, I'm into exercise and, and, and lifting weights, and when you lift weights, you, you can develop a callus. Now, the truth is that once you get under that callus, there's sensitive tissue. So you've got to pull off the layers of hardness so you can get to the soft tissue. And that literally is the world we live in. We, we live in a hardened world. London is a very hardened yeah. culture. And we've got to get underneath that hard exterior to the soft tissue because we all have soft hearts underneath it all. Come on now. Underneath it all. He says the hearts have become callous. Become callous. They hardly hear with their ears. They close their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes. Hear with their ears. Understand with their hearts and turn and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see with... Because they see, and your ears because they hear. For I tell you the truth, that many prophets and righteous men long to see what you see, but did not see it. And hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom of God and doesn't understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed along the path. 
The one who received the seed that fell on the rocky place is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the church, because of the word of God, he quickly falls away. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word. But the worries of this life and going to work, the deceitfulness of wealth, choking, making it unfruitful. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil, see there's only one soil that's good. The seed of the gospel is, is today is trying to fall on some good soil. Someone in this audience is good soil. I'm not talking about those of you just, but I'm talking about just some of them. Yeah. Amongst everybody. So there's somebody some good soil. You got, I want okay. And the word of God gets planted in your heart and you can produce something. It only can produce in good soil. Amen. You can't have a bad soil heart and produce anything. Mm. And so that, that's convicting. So wow, you may not have been fruitful because you got a bad heart. Yeah. You gotta deal with your heart. You gotta deal with that soil. It says the man who is in the good soil is the man who hears the word, understands it, he produces a crop, yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. And the church said, yes. Amen. I like this because this is um, this whole section of uh, Matthew begins with him telling basically seven, eight parables, uh, and things kind of shift in the book of Matthew uh, at this particular time. And he, he, what starts to shift is Jesus is focused on the kingdom of God. Now, the Bible teaches in Matthew chapter 16, the kingdom of God is the church. The kingdom of God is not coming. The kingdom of God has already come. Amen. It came in Acts chapter 2. Revelation chapter 1, John says he was in the kingdom. He wasn't waiting for it. He was in the kingdom. In fact, you can't be in the kingdom unless you allow the king to reign in your life now. A lot of people teach that the kingdom is coming. No, that means Jesus is coming, and that's true, but that means that Jesus is not reigning now. Yeah. Yeah. And that could be true for you. He may not be reigning in your life now. But let me tell you something. Jesus is reigning now, yeah. whether you want him to or not. And he has a kingdom now, whether you believe it or not. And the kingdom is the church. Yeah. The kingdom is the church. And so he, he begins talking about the kingdom. He begins talking about the church. Uh, and he gives all these parables to tell what the kingdom is like. We're going to get to the counterfeit part in a second. But in verse 24, it's interesting. He says, uh, Jesus told him another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like. You look at verse 31. He told him a parable. The kingdom of heaven is like. Look down in verse 33. He says this here. He says, he told him still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like. And he goes on to explain. Verse 44. He says, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure in a field. Verse 45, again, the kingdom of heaven is like. Verse 47, once again, the kingdom of heaven is like. He's just telling them about the church. Verse 52, he says this. He said to them, therefore, every teacher of the law who hears or who has been instructed about the kingdom of heaven is like. And he starts talking about what the kingdom is. What's the kingdom been like for you? What has the kingdom been like for you? Has it been awesome? Yeah. Has it been encouraging? Yes. It's been both for me. Come on. The king has been awesome at times. It's been awful at times. Yeah. One of the awful things is seeing people leave the kingdom. That's right. I, I, I don't like that. One of the awful things is when you don't get the glory in the kingdom that you want. Glory. Come on, God's like, you don't need me, glory. Recycling. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right? Yeah. One of the aw awesome things is all the incredible friendships. Yeah. All the different nations. One of the awesome things about the kingdom has been all the amazing opportunities to use my sin and my weaknesses and my failure to be a light for other people. Uh, to be able to look other men in the eye and go, you can yeah. overcome being addicted to pornography. Yeah. Come on, Mark. To be able to look women in the eye and go, you can have yeah. a relationship with a man who decides to love God more than anything else. Uh, to be a protector of sisters. Yeah. That's been awesome. Yeah. To have vision, to have an eternal vision for my life. <clears throat> you know, when, when you have, when you're in the kingdom, God has an eternal vision for you. Wow. Everything that you've gone through that's been challenging, God can use it for his glory. Amen. That's the amazing thing about the kingdom. That's not the amazing about the world. Mm -hmm. The world will eat you up and spit you out. That's right. What's the kingdom been like for you? Amen. 
You know, when we stop seeing the kingdom as awesome, that's when we start being attracted to the darkness and not the light. You know, I love so much how Matthew breaks it down. In verse 24, he says this here. He says, Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed seed in the field. But while everyone was what? Sleeping. His enemy came and sowed weeds, in the, weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came in and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? I mean, didn't you do all the Bible studies? Didn't you count the cost? I mean, didn't you tell them what, what, what happened? Didn't you tell them about the persecution? Didn't you tell them everything? Where'd these weeds come from? An enemy did this. He replied, the servants asked, you want us to go and pull them up? I mean, these guys are hard locked. <laughs> he says, you want us to get all the weeds out of the church? No, he answered. Because while you were pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds, tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. You know, we got to really understand the kingdom. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot here. I want to call on a couple of things. <coughs> you kick back to verse. Come on, bro. Come on, 29, or verse 19, he says, When anyone hears a message about the kingdom and doesn't understand it, the evil one comes and snatches it away. Mm. Not understanding the kingdom can be a salvation issue for you. Yeah. Right. Not understanding the kingdom. He says in verse 20, when anyone who received the seed that fell among the rocky places, the man who hears the word at once and receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts a short time. Being emotionalism, being super excited, but not having any deep roots. Not having any deep roots. Of course, he talks about the persecution and the trouble. That could take you out of the kingdom of God. But what's so convicting when you get down to this section is that God says genuine faith and false faith must live together. Mm. Yeah. They must live together. <coughs> true Christians, true disciples, and false disciples will be in the same church. Wow. Weeds and wheat will be in the same church, and you can't pull them all out. You can't pull them all out. I don't know if that's what you're reading. I'm reading right here. It says, you don't do this. God does it. Yeah. Yeah. You don't do it. God does it. Mm. And, you know, I so love this, this text because it, it's just so convicting. Mm -hmm. You know, when you think about trouble and persecution up in verse 21, you go, wow. When trouble and persecution comes, we, we, we can't leave the kingdom. We can't leave God. And trouble and persecution will come. Yeah. It will come. It will come in a, in a way that you don't understand. Or maybe you do understand it. it will, your family may not be excited about you joining the kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> your friends may not be excited about you joining the kingdom. That other person inside of you may not be excited about the kingdom. See, everybody has two people inside. Mm -hmm. You got one that loves and one that hates. Mm -hmm. You got one that's spiritual and one that's ungodly. Yeah. You got one that's drawn to the light. You got one of you that's drawn to the darkness. Yeah. Your darkness could be porn, impurity, lust, and these outward oh, things. No. Your darkness could be flat out lazy. Yeah. It can be skepticism and negative thinking, mm -hmm. bitterness and criticism. That's just as wicked in the eyes of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God doesn't go, okay, well, okay, your criticism and skepticism is worse than his. No, God goes, it's sin, it's darkness, it separates you from God. Isaiah 59, verse 1 through 2 yeah. says the only thing that can separate you from God is sin. Mm -hmm. The only thing that can separate you. And when I think about trouble or persecution, I'm very greatly humbled because we have disciples that have had trouble, that have had persecution. I can't think of a worse place to go be persecuted than a place where the Islamic State or the Muslim faith yeah. is very dominant, yeah. Yeah. like Dubai. Yeah. 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 And I think about trouble and persecution, it reminds me of our sister, April Baker, yeah. with congestive heart failure, mm -hmm. a heart functioning where she could die any day. Yeah. She's fired up about Jesus. Amen. And the Dubai Church has had 13 disciples with 26 baptisms. She understands the kingdom. She doesn't let trouble or persecution take her out. How about you? Yeah. How about you? This parable here, when we get down to the weeds, there's some things about bearing fruit that I, I think are very important. 
Uh, first of all, you got to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. You, better you, <laughs> you got to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. If you don't love God then, and you love fruit, then it means you don't really love God or the fruit. You got to love God in order to love the fruit. It's got to be motivated out of a love for God, not a love for fruitfulness. This is a sin I've fallen into many times. You want to be fruitful, but not because you just love God and you want to help someone be saved. Yes. You just want another member. You want some. You want. You see what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That that's hurt me at times. Um, to be fruitful, you got to put care over confrontation. You got to put care over confrontation. You got to care about them more. You just want to confront. Yeah. To be fruitful, it takes hard work. Yeah. It takes hard work. And if there's one thing you can't be, you can't be distracted mm -hmm. <laughs> to help someone know God. You've got to be focused mm -hmm. to help someone know God. But this one here, back to our counterfeit. <coughs> the counterfeit bears no fruit. The counterfeit is, as it says here, to let them grow together until harvest. At that time, I'll tell the harvester, first collect the weeds and then tie them in the bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Now, we, we got to identify what counterfeits are like. First of all, it calls them weeds. It calls them weeds. Um, what kind of weeds are out there? I've kind of highlighted a few weeds so you can identify for yourself. First of all, there's the thistle. We used to meet there, but a weed can be a thistle. <laughs> there's a thistle. What's a thistle like? Prickly. Oh, yeah. They stick you. Right? Negative. <laughs> negative. How can you be a negative Christian? Isn't that, a, isn't that a oxymoron? Yeah. To be a negative Christian. Like, Jesus saved you from all your sins, but you're negative. Ooh. You're prickly. Right? How about the good looking? You know, some weeds look good. I look at the weeds in the back. We have a back garden, and I went back there, and I was kind of playing. I was like, oh, that's, oh that's, a, that's an awesome flower. And the garden goes, that's a weed. <laughs> it looked just like a flower. Yeah. Cool. Uh, but then it was kind of weird. It kind of had some odd, kind of, kind of an odd little, you know, some little things on it. I was like, it, it, I never, it's not a rose. It's not a tulip. It's, what is it? It's a weed. Oh, it looked like everything else. But it was a weed. Some weeds look good. But weeds all kill other plants. This can happen. Some disciples can look good. But secretly have false doctrine in their hearts. Secretly have false teaching that they believe. They don't say it, but they don't really believe only disciples are saved. Even though that's what the Bible teaches. They don't believe once saved, always saved. Or once saved, not always saved. Yeah. You have churches that preach this. God can never take his love away from you. Right, but you can take your love from God away from him. God, there's one thing God won't do. He will not force anybody into heaven. He will not force you into heaven. You don't want to go to heaven, he will not force you. God's love is unconditional. That means if you're here today, he loves you. Unconditional. It's not like, hey, if you get baptized, I love you. If you don't get baptized, I don't love you. No, no. God is love. He is the standard. He is not arbitrary. He doesn't change like we do. We change. Right? God isn't like getting older and we get older. Right? Uh, God doesn't. God is, God is watching the end from the beginning. He created everything and he's at the end watching it all. Watch, he created history and is watching it unfold right now. He knows exactly. He, he's watching. Now he's giving you a bit of power. It's called your own self. You know, your own self will. He's giving you that. But God's love is unconditional. But having a relationship with God is totally conditional. Yeah. Yeah. It's totally conditional. Just because he loves you does not mean you're saved. That's right, yeah. Just because he loves you does not mean you're going to heaven. He yeah. totally loves you. He loves a lot of people that are going directly straight to hell. Yeah. He loves a, a lot of people. And you know what he does about it? He cries. Yeah. And then what he does is he tries to motivate those who do love him to share their faith. Yeah. He tries to motivate them to shatter the silence on the tube yeah. and not be, oh, someone said something negative. Fight back. Yeah. So fight back? Quit being so persuaded by, or, or so motivated by whether someone says something nice or not. Yeah. You have to stop being afraid. Yeah. Just share our faith. Yeah, yeah but someone's negative. Who cares? 
I remember the guys that shared their faith with me, they tracked me down. <laughs> they called me, hassled me, harassed me. I was like, the Christians are after me. I would see people and they would look at me, I'd go, oh, he must be, he's going to be a Christian. Be like <laughs> I was more afraid of Christians than anything. I mean, I just, because I, those demons inside me, right there. Mm -hmm. Right? And when we're afraid of Christians, we're afraid of the light. There's something going on. We're often afraid like this. So I, I, but they went after me. They were not afraid to go after me. But they're good-looking weeds. They're good-looking weeds. Um, how about the choker? The choker. Right? All weeds choke the life out of the other plants. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We can't be that in the church where we choke the life out of other, other disciples. Hey, bro, how you doing? Get out of here, oh, there you are. Oh, I'm looking for you. Oh, you come, come here. Oh, you want me to... Oh, 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 you want to spend time with me. Oh, you want to... Come on, Michael. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to spend time with one another. Yeah. Why? But if people mean that much to your salvation, you are going to fall away. That's yeah. right. You are going to fall away. If someone does it, isn't there to resuscitate you every 30 seconds <laughs> and give you a scripture to tell you how awesome you are. You can find out how awesome you are in the Bible every day. Yeah. Come on, Jesus man. can tell you how awesome you are. Yeah, come on, bro. You don't need, you don't need your husband to tell you how awesome you are. The Bible tells you. Yeah. You don't need your wife to tell you how awesome you are. The Bible tells you. You don't need your disciple to tell you to come to church. Jesus tells you every single day. Yeah. Yeah. We can't be choked with them. We choke the life out of the church. Mm -hmm. Are you with me here? Yeah. How about cannabis? That's another weed. Literally. Now, let me help you. Weeds. Weeds. This is very convicting. I didn't know this. The weeds and the wheat that grow together, you can't tell the difference between the two. Yeah. Until they get old. Then the weeds actually start to bear fruit of a weed. So there's two lessons here. There's the cannabis, and then there's the old tear. There's two different kind of weeds that can come on in. The old tear, where the older you get, the worries of life, the drudgery of being in the kingdom. Before you know it, you, 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 you become a weed, and you start getting old. Now, this, this thing here is interesting because the tares are actually called, darn it, you know, other translations say the weeds and the um, tares, um, or the wheat and the tares, rather. The tares are actually called darnel weeds. Uh, if a darnel weed was ingested accidentally outside of uh, a piece of true wheat, then what would happen, uh, of course the darnel weeds were in Palestine, what would happen is it would cause nausea, it would cause confusion, it would cause vomiting, it would cause bitterness and disillusion. That's convicting. I don't want to cause anybody to get disillusioned about the kingdom. I don't want to cause anyone in my bitterness to help somebody else be bitter or to be confused. This could be cannabis or an old tear. We know how God deals with weeds. He cuts them off. He cuts them off. We can't, but he cuts them off. And my challenge today simply is really to love God and you'll love the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Amen. Love God and you'll love the kingdom. If you love God, the kingdom will be like, it will be awesome to you. Okay. But if you don't, if you love, you notice, I've never noticed this. There's not one scripture that says, love the kingdom. Yeah, right. No? It's a seeking. It's a seeking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was kidding. I said, man, it doesn't say love the kingdom. Yeah. And I, that was good because I go, there's a lot of things about the kingdom I don't love. <laughs> well, honestly, I mean, you guys are yeah. more spiritual than me. Yeah. But, um, I, I'm just going to be honest. Well, one of the things I don't love is this right here. I don't love that we got to have weeds and wheat grow together. I don't love that. I don't like that. I, don't, I, I want to go, okay, you're not committed. You're out of here. Yeah. I want everybody. But God says, no. You need to trust me. Amen. You need to trust me. Who knows? Maybe some of those weeds will, will change. Maybe they'll change. Maybe that'll expose whether you really love me or not. Wow. Right? But there does, the Bible does teach us to love God. Yeah. And when we love God with all of our heart, mind, and soul, and strength, then we can love the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. But if we just love the kingdom, we're in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. That's what happened in our former fellowship. Yeah. People love the kingdom. 
And the kingdom is kind of cool. I mean, the kingdom is awesome. The kingdom is great. You start, you start, I mean, you got sisters that tell you you're amazing. You know, you got like Josie. Josie's got a smile at the age. I just come in with all my bitterness and anger and frustration and anxiety. And she's like, oh, so Josie, she gives me the hug. She tells me I'm great. I got Rob Williamson over there. I got Lillian Williamson. She's like the queen of Africa. She, I'm the queen of Africa. We're going to make disciples right now. You know, she's all excited. I got Stuart Brown. You know, Stuart right there. Stuart's amazing. He, he's, he's got this, you know, he's got this smart way about him. He's a true gentleman. Uh, you know, you, uh, you, you become a Christian, you get a gentleman as a friend. Uh, this is great. You, you know, you got, you got so many great Friendships and relationships. Yeah. We got Demeji. He, he's a model, true, real model Christian. Yeah. Uh, a runway model, but he converted my son. Yeah. Him and Frank. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. The kingdom is awesome. <laughs> but we got to love God. Yeah. Yeah. So that we can actually love the kingdom. Yeah. 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 Why do people fall away sometimes? Because they don't feel love in the kingdom. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're looking for love in all the wrong places sometimes. you got to look for it in God. Yeah. He's the God of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And you got to separate God in the kingdom and, and make sure you love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Mm -hmm. When you love God, you go, okay, there's nothing you can do to take your love away from me, God. And that's, I'm, I'm going to stay with you because there's nowhere else I'm going. Mm -hmm. There's nowhere else I'm going. And the kingdom will be like something awesome for you. Yeah. Amen. It'll, it, it will be awesome for you. In conclusion, simple question. Do you love God? Do you honestly love God? You say, absolutely I love God. Do you love your neighbor? <laughs> that, that really is the, the million dollar question. Not do you emotionally love God and you read your Bible, but are you making disciples? Are you actually bearing fruit? That's really the test. And you know, we've come out of the European Missions Conference, it's been great. I don't know about you, there was some great teaching there, some challenging teaching there, inspirational teaching there. I've seen some of you go on some dates and get all excited and everything about the kingdom. And, uh, you know, I saw you know, one brother was going on two and three dates and saying oh, sister and everything. Yeah. Oh, Frank, oh, 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 bro. Oh, 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 bro. Oh, oh, oh. I'm not going to embarrass Frank or anything like this. Going on out, you know. I, I just saw a lot of disciples. Now, sadly, I didn't see some disciples. Sadly, you know, it makes me question your love for God if you don't love the kingdom. Right? You gotta love God to love the kingdom. But I think one of the things we've got to understand is that it, it's time for us to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and then love our neighbor. And to plant more wheat in the kingdom than weeds. Yes. To start truly making disciples. Now, since we've come off the EMC, amen, we haven't been out there, but it's time to be fruitful. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not just some of us, but that's all of us. Yeah. And so you got to ask yourself today, when's the last time you were fruitful? When's the last time you personally helped somebody become a Christian? When's the last time you dove into the Regent, Regent Canal right there? I remember diving in there with Alex. Me and him together. Yes! <laughs> I remember Emmanuel, you know, diving in there. Yes! Wow. <laughs> I think I even got in there with a couple sisters. I think it was Miriam. What are that? When's the last time you've been fruitful? Yeah. Think about it. Are you, are you bearing fruit? Are you bearing fruit? Are you bearing fruit? It, it, it's time for us all to get laser focused in and to be the light of the world. Where people are drawn to our focus. People are drawn to our commitment to God. People are drawn and they want to join the kingdom of God. They want to give up everything. Yeah. They want to go anywhere. They want to do anything. They see it in our hearts. Mm -hmm. It is time for the North region to lead the way in fruitfulness. Yeah. There's one thing that killed me, I, I really believe this year, it's distractions. Yeah. Yeah. Being distracted and trying to do a bunch of different things. No more. I just want to be fruitful mm -hmm. and call you guys to do the same. To God be all the glory. Thank you.